Like Amanda Peterson, Mackenzie Phillips had a very public battle with drug addiction. Even after two near-fatal overdoses, the One Day at a Time star found sobriety elusive. Now clean for over a decade, Mackenzie has turned her life around to help others in their grips with addiction. Let's check out her story. Please welcome Mackenzie Phillips back to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Mackenzie, I, I want to give you props because one of the things that you are not afraid to do is share your own personal struggles with addiction and relapse mm -hmm. and you relating to someone who felt like they were a failure because of the back and forth of relapse, yes. addiction, relapse. There is a solution. There's a way out of the rabbit hole. And when the light goes on and you go, oh my God, I really don't have to live this way anymore. Uh, you know, I'm an expert experientially but I also have gone to school so that I could be a counselor and, and work in treatment and recovery. What I want to ask you is, we used this statistic on the show recently, something like 10% of addicts are getting the help they need. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's because addicts don't know they need help. <laughs> yeah. when, when does an addict or an abuser, when is that point where they should think to themselves, I may need help for this. I it's, don't have this under control. It's very difficult for the distorted perception mind to see that their perceptions are distorted because of the nature of a distorted perception. So quite often we can't see it. As addicts, we can't see that we're burning it down, that our lives are falling apart, but the people around us can see. Because you get to the point where you can't not do it anymore. You go, I don't want, I'm not going to the dealer's house. I'm not going to the crap, I'm at the dealer's house. I think that hitting a bottom has become a very dangerous thing because these days, hitting a bottom is death. Yeah, and so we need to raise the bottom and get in there and intervene before our people die. When you're dealing with heroin, and, and you know, give us some insight, why are we seeing this heroin Epidemic. I'm telling you why you see it. I mean, it happened to me. I was on medication, opioid pain medication for serious back issues. Granted, I was also in a relapse, so you figure that out. And so once the doctor said, hey, you should be fine by now, that's enough of that. No more Oxycontin for you. The beast was alive. I had a withdrawal. And so people might think it's a really far jump from opioid pain medication to heroin, but it's not anymore. And it happens in your neighborhood and in your homes and, and in your schools. It's the front it's line. Not it's the prescribers need to figure out. You know, the prescribers need to take some responsibility and say, we're not going to do this anymore. I mean, I work at Breathe Life Healing Centers in West Hollywood, and we're a drug and alcohol treatment facility that also has an eating disorder component. And I work with young heroin addicts every day, and I tell you the lion's share of them started by getting their parents old meds out of the cabinet the for opioids. the old knee surgery you know and then and then it becomes a thing three quick tips okay for got a recovering addict got them okay so i want you to create a recovery routine i want you to create a life that is structured and scheduled based around your recovery based activities i want you to get into action i want you to go out there and i want you to find a support group and like-minded people who can hold you up when you're feeling like you want to get high and I want you to not be afraid to ask for help. We cannot do this alone. We as addicts need a community around us that will help hold us up and help keep us sober.